Welcome! It is time for the Summer 2019 Anime Preview Guide. I sat down and I watched 23 of the new anime coming out this season, first episode only. As usual, uh, the restrictions here are, I've only watched the first episode of all these, so I can't comment on, on anything beyond that. Um, I'm not watching any Season 2s or Season 3s, because I figure if you watch Season 1, you're going to watch Season 2, and you're probably not going to dive in in the middle of, a, in the, middle of you know, the third season. Um, also, no shows, like, clearly aimed at, pre at like, uh, kindergartners, right? Like, that's just not the kind of stuff we're normally into. Um, and that, I think, is, is, is that. Uh, and I'm probably going to talk about some of the stuff that happens in that episode, because kind of that's how you explain what the show is. So, FYI. All right, let's get into this, and let us look at the first title which is, and we're doing this alphabetically, um, as you might imagine, um, Are You Lost on Crunchyroll? This is kind of an odd juxtaposition. It is an anime series about a group of teenage girls who wash up on a deserted island and have to survive. They uh, contain a couple of you know, stereotypes, and so it is both sort of um, etchy material of, you know, girls in wet clothing, you know, things along those lines. Um, a lot of that kind of, you know, etchy stuff along with a lot of like survival tips and how to survive in the wilderness things along those lines combined with some humor with the uh, strange situation they're in and the strangeness of the various personalities in there i enjoyed it it's fun it's a shorter episodes um series so i think 12 minutes per episode it was fun entertaining um i think if you like the survival stuff that will keep you going if you like the etchy stuff that will keep you going um and it's just a, a pleasant sort of a show in that sense uh, and definitely you know what you're getting into when you're watching the show. So, FYI, kind of fun. Uh, moving on to Arafureta from Commonplace to World's Strongest. This is a bit difficult because the um, it basically starts pushed forward into the show. Um, and it kind of shows you how the protagonist changes. But it doesn't explain a lot of the backstory, which was there in... Um, in the main plot. So, like, if you look up this show, you'll find a bunch of the backstory um, and not the, the big plot twist that happens in episode one. Um, basic premise, it's in this guy series, characters are, are transported into this alternate, into this fantasy world. Uh, the main character has a, we'll just say, a very traumatic experience, which causes him to get just very dark and gritty and, uh, you know, very, very angsty. Just angst. Angst all over the place in this show. So it's one of those sorts of, of series, if you're interested in that kind of a thing. Um, I found it interesting, definitely, and uh, clearly there to appeal more to that shonen audience that wants something a little darker and, and grimmer than your average shonen series. Um, but a bit of a weird sort of place uh, to start the story, so FYI. Moving on to Astra Lost in Space. This is on Funimation. It is a relatively hard science fiction story about a group of teenagers who all go on a uh, trip into space. There are these regular um, trips. You know, high schoolers are regularly sent on trips into space as kind of a learning opportunity. And I don't think it's a spoiler to say that things don't go exactly as expected. Um, uh, like I said, it's a little more hard science fiction. It's a little more um, serious. Um, it starts off very goofy and light, but it gets more serious as the episode goes on. Um, if you're into shows like, oh gosh, it's kind of hard to describe because it has humor, um, it has some drama, it has interpersonal conflicts. I'm sure there's some, some romance is going to evolve that hasn't really come out yet in the show. Uh, wide variety of characters and personalities. So very interested, interesting. To, um, very interested to see where this one's going to go. Uh, really like what I've seen so far um, in terms of just kind of appealing to my tastes. Uh, was really not for everyone. So don't be fooled by the very sort of uh, uh, light shonen uh, aspect of this poster. It's not quite like that at all. Um, a little more serious than that. So interesting to see where that goes. And nice to see something that's a little more, um, uh, again, sort of hard science, science fiction, a little more grounded. Uh, something that is certainly not that is Copcraft, also on Funimation. A show set in America, actually, but uh, an America and a world in which a fantasy world is crossing over into it. So as opposed to Isekai, where we're transporting over there, where there's basically a portal to a fantasy world that is more or less permanently on at some point in the world. And folks are uh, kind of dealing with that because now there are elves and fairies in the real world. 
Uh, the main character, the, the, the guy you see there, is a cop, and he ends up, I don't think it's a, a spoiler to indicate that he ends up um, together with this, uh, uh, this girl. I'll put it that much. It's kind of fun. Um, uh, it very much feels like, you know, NCIS the anime, but with, like, fairies and elves. So um, much more grounded, more gritty, more serious. Um, you know, you, you see the impacts of a lot of these things, of things that happen. You know, somebody dies, that's a really bad thing. It's, it's, a, it's a big deal. Um, but also dealing with the complexities of, you know, you introduce you know, magic and fairy people and so forth. And suddenly there are all sorts of new markets opening up and all sorts of new opportunities and things taking advantage of that and kind of dealing with that from a police perspective. So um, I like this a lot. It's a very interesting premise and the characters are not quite, I mean, they're clearly archetypes, but they're not, you know, complete tropes. So I'm curious to see kind of where it's going with, with the, the story. And boy, this show knows how to end an episode one. That, that is how to do the ending of an episode, just right there. Um, really, really impressive there. So again, if you're interested in sort of a, more like a Witch Hunter Robin kind of a show maybe, um, or even like um, what I've seen of, um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting it, but um, uh, you know, again, sort of police procedural, but with fantastic elements to it, pretty fun. Moving on to The Demon Girl Next Door on High Dive. This is one of the big goofy comedies, screwball comedies of the season. Uh, the main character is an everyday teenage girl who comes to find out, uh, she wakes up one day to have devil horns and a tail and discovers that she's actually a devil. Um, she's one of a, a long line of devils and her, she, this is explained to her uh, shortly thereafter. And so she must now go out and defeat a magical girl and um, pour her blood on the family's little idol to appease their like demon god, whatever. Of course, there happens to be a magical girl in the same neighborhood, and she's very nice and very straightforward and extraordinarily powerful, while the, the, the teenage girl is just there. Hey, Spatcha. Uh, well, the teenage girl is just kind of this normal sort of think, uh, you know, K-on kind of a girl for, uh, for, for, for uh, the protagonist here. And she's got this magical girl who can, like, you know, stop a bus with one hand. So, uh, fun juxtaposition of that kind of thing. Definitely a trope, um, uh, 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 a trope reversal on the magical girl concept and playing around with, with magical girl. Definitely seems some uh, Madoka Magica aspects to it too, as well as you can see with the, the main girl's costume. So, really fun thing. Um, a really fun show. I enjoyed this one a lot. Uh, but again, it's more aimed at like those otaku that are expecting those who, who know the tropes enough to laugh at their subversions. Um, fun, funny show, right? Which sometimes you want that. Moving on to Demon Lord Retry, an anime series in which a um, uh, a man wakes up in, a, in an MMO that he has been part of, uh, essentially reincarnated in the, the body of the character that he played, who is sort of this mafia don kind of a character. And so he goes in and starts, you know, exploring that and very quickly uh, connects with a, a young girl. Um, and there starts sort of a quest involving that character. Interesting because it seems to be dealing with um, personality, with the main character having kind of a, a rough personality and learning to mm, work the edges off of that roughness, which is uh, uh, fun to see. Um, unfortunately, there's another anime series with almost the exact, with a very similar premise this season, which I happen to like more. Uh, and I saw that one first, so I'm a little biased against that one because I kind of fell in love with the other one. But that is kind of you know the reality of things. Um, but this is definitely a, a, a fun light show. Definitely one of those shows that I think will um, you need to watch a few episodes to see kind of where it goes, as opposed to more like the premise first episode. Um, but yeah, obviously more light fun show there. Speaking of, do you love your mom and her two hit multi target attacks? Uh, this is another Isekai series this season, Boy Transported to Fantasy World, in this case an MMO, except in this case his mom tags along with him, and his mother is a little, is rather doting. She, you know, is, is you know, uses a diminutive name for him and is constantly asking how he's doing, and it's basically, you know, imagine your mom tagging along where she has no idea how any of this works, and just kind of does things and doesn't really, you know, doesn't understand. So it's that kind of 
craziness of trying to deal with your mom um but she's like you know she's trying to make this work right it's not like she's an evil person or anything but uh, all of that sort of um uh issues with have, being a an average teenage boy who's a little bit embarrassed of his mother and now she's trailing along with him all over the place so looking forward to see where that goes um the first episode did a, a good job of sort of hitting a middle point between having some comedy um uh, having a little bit of action, um, doing some world building and kind of exploring things. It was a nicely set up first episode, uh, but still definitely, you know, we really only know a couple of characters in this and the proof will be when we see the other characters and how that kind of works out. Now moving on to one of the big shows of the season, Dr. Stone, one of the big sort of classic shonen kind of stories. So if you're used to, oh, I don't know, Dragon Ball, or um, this definitely felt like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure in sort of art style and approach, um, very much uh, that kind of concept. Um, I don't want to say too much here uh, without getting into spoilers. We'll say it's kind of a survivalist anime series and dealing with a world where they're only, you know, you're, you're trying to just survive in this big wilderness. And that's interesting because there's a certain amount of actual elements of survivalism in here, kind of like the show from the beginning. Um, but this is with, you know, shonen heroes who can, you know, punch trees and things like that. So it has that excitement going on. Um, and I'm just, um, I'm really looking forward to the Doctor, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where Dr. Stone goes. Because I think they're really going to expand out and kind of build on this world in interesting ways. Um, but it's definitely a shonen series, right? Like you're doing a My Hero Academia or, you know, any of that kind of a classic in Naruto, you know, kind of a... a a shonen feel for, for this series. So if you're not into this, probably not going to appeal to you very much. Um, but if you are, like this is very much in that vein. Uh, moving on to Ensemble Stars, which is on Funimation. Boy, this is a weird one. This is a show set at a boys' school for idols. So the school literally trains teenage boys to be idols. But there's these like unofficial competitions involved because the whole school is actually like um like working for the man and and some of the boys are like trying to be like real singers as opposed to these fake idols so it's kind of dealing with aspects of idol culture in japan while also having a lot of weird over-the-top comedy not just weird over-the-top comedy but just classic anime over-the-top comedy Definitely one of those things where you're going to um, either bounce right off it or enjoy it uh, because it's, it's pretty much all boys. There is a girl who's kind of in the center of it all, so it's very much one of those you know re reverse harem situations. Um, and is wacky, which, again, that doesn't appeal to everybody. Um, but you can certainly tell they're, they're going for something very specific with this. Uh, it's, it doesn't feel like they're just you know throwing three tropes into one show and just executing on that. Um, it feels like they're trying to go somewhere with a... It feels like they're trying to really mix up some some different elements into it uh, and, and play around with some unusual aspects of this kind of, you know, we're going to be idols kind of a show. So, again, we'll see, but interesting. Uh, as with a lot of shows this season. Uh, also, Fire Force, as AS in the chat room called um, um, Sakuga the Anime. This has... Almost certainly the biggest animation budget this season, at least episode one is, um, set in a world where people, uh, where let's just say fires are breaking out a lot, and uh, the main characters fight fire basically with fire. Um, but it is an alternate reality, so there are very different things going on here. Uh, this is not simply firefighting. There is a fantastical element to it, as you can see by the nun there on the far side of this. So... One of the things I love about Fire Force is that it does do some interesting world building. It is set in this very specific um, world where there's some anachronisms in there, some modern technology, some older technology, some stuff all throughout like 20th century um, or the 20th century. So it's really interesting seeing a, a lovely sort of mishmash of different elements. Mishmash is usually a negative word, but you know, a, a, a combination, a melange of different elements that all seem to fit together quite well, at least in, in episode one. Um, unfortunately, it's been uh, sort of pushed back given the Kyoto Animation fire, uh, but hopefully we'll be seeing more of that uh, soon in future because, my gosh, does it look gorgeous. Um, and does some nice sort of editing things and pacing things in that first episode to kind of reveal stuff. 
So gorgeous, gorgeous show. And if you love animation, like that's 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 where to go. Moving on to Given over on Crunchyroll. Uh, Given is a sort of a boys' love uh, manga, I believe, being adapted into an anime. Um, and it's about uh, teenage boys who are learning to sing and basically form a band. So a little bit of that Beck feel, a little bit of that K-On feel, but much more uh, realistic, much more sort of real world kind of a, a situation. Again, more like Beck, but without the weird Frankenstein dog. Um, so it's um, all these boys sort of, you know, hanging around and, um, and forming a band all together. Now, I've heard different things about the original manga and what they're trying to adapt with this. Again, it's one of those things that I think, is, excuse me, one of those things that I think is going to either bounce off of you because you just, you know, like, yeah, a bunch of you know, guys hanging out um, and feeling weird about each other and then singing a lot, which is not for everyone, but it is a, um, it's neat seeing a show that is more grounded, that is more serious like this. Um, I mean, there's comedy in it, but it definitely feels more like, again, so that adolescent situations that you find um, in real life as opposed to in weird anime situations. Uh, then let's talk about Grand Belm, which is a sort of a quasi-magical girl series. Definitely a Madoka Magica-esque magical girl series about uh, girls who shift into sort of an alternate reality to have their magical girl fights and then shift back out of it. And so the neat thing is you get this very fantastical world that they're fighting in. But then also they fight in giant robots. So technically a mecha series. Although the mecha are very retro sort of SD Gundam style mecha, which I don't mind. I, I like that style. The animation in episode one was a little hard to follow sometimes because of the just design of those mecha. Sometimes when they're moving around or you know zooming in real quick, it was difficult to tell kind of what part of it was what. Uh, as you can see from that mecha at the top, it can be a little, little difficult to track sometimes. But um, high animation quality, um, a variety of different characters in there, and... Uh, again, definitely has that kind of Madoka Magica vibe. So curious to see where that goes. Don't know if it gets as dark as that show, but cool. And again, cool to see some interesting twists on the premise. Then there's a Hensuki. Are you willing to fall in love with a cutie even if she is a pervert? I believe is the, the full title there. Which is a romantic comedy about a young man who falls in love with a girl only to find out she has a um, pretty significant fetish. And uh, kind of dealing with that, and apparently some of the other girls do too as well that he's surrounded with. Uh, you know, on the outside, seem perfectly normal, but they actually have these these weird aspects to them. So it's a cute, uh, uh, cute show, very moe, um, you know, light romantic comedy kind of aspect to it, and then you have that you know, kind of big twist to it, uh, which is not a. I mean, you can tell from the poster art kind of where that's going. Um, but that, that, that element to it. So I'm curious to see where that's going because um, we, didn't, we don't really get much of that in the first episode. Uh, the first episode is more sort of establishing who the characters are, the personalities, and so forth um, before you get into that uh, fetish aspect of the show. So we'll see. I don't know. Um, certainly not the first sort of weird, etchy show I've seen like that. Um, but it could go really, you know, it could, it could really... It could either... Treat that lightly and just have fun with it. It could be just kind of a fun exploration of it. It could go way off the deep end, right, and, and be uh, kind of creepy about it. Um, who knows? I'm hoping it's actually like a, you know, a, like I said, a fun, light exploration of this concept of like, okay, you have a fetish. Okay. We'll see. Speaking of fetishes, uh, how heavy are the dumbbells you lift on Funimation? Um, this is an exercise anime, specifically a weightlifting anime series. And it's basically two things. On the one hand, um, it's about a couple of teenage girls who have decided they want to, um, you know, lift weights. Well, one of them wants to lift weights. Um, others are kind of already in it and, involved, and into weightlifting. And so the, the main girl, the blonde there, goes to a, you know, joins a gym and starts, you know, learning this. And so the fun thing is that the, um, there is a lot of, like, actual practical weightlifting advice in it. Here's how to do squats. Here's how to do this. Um, but then the fun thing is that the main character has not done any of that at all. So you get all of that experience that you get when you first do weightlifting where you're like, this seems easy. Oh my gosh, I'm dead. 
so they play around with that a lot. Um, but also the, the black haired girl you see there is, let's just say very into muscular guys. So she's, you know, going around this gym and seeing all these muscular guys just panting the entire time. So there's that aspect to it too. One thing I do appreciate that there is um, that it's, um, it, it is very much self-aware of that. Like all the muscular guys are absurdly over muscular, like Mr. Universe, just muscles on muscles on muscles. Um, so yeah, they're, they're having fun with it. Um, it's, it's a, I think it's closer to a sport anime. It's more like an exercise anime. Here's how to do exercises with comedy, you know, layered on top of that, basically. Um, but like you, you learn several weightlifting exercises in that first episode, like explained very clearly to you. So again, more sport than anything else, I would say. And, uh, but made entertaining. Um, like I, I was fairly entertained. Like I could, I could see watching more of that. And then uh, we've got, if it's for my daughter, I'd even defeat a demon lord. Uh, this is not an isekai series. The main character is an adventurer in a fantasy world, kind of working his way up. And he ends up rescuing a little girl who is out in the woods and uh, decides to try to, um, uh, to uh, you know, he considers like sending her to an orphanage, all that kind of stuff, and realizes it's probably not the best place for her. So he decides to basically adopt her, for lack of a better term. Um, so this is very clearly an anime series aimed at Japan's young adult population telling them that you know children are actually cute so you should have as many of them as you can um in other words you know have kids please so that's the idea here the the little girl is absolutely adorable and um uh just you know you'll you, she will melt your heart immediately and it's clearly you know trying to make you feel that little little girls are, are you know, little kids are fun to have around um partly because of her personality she's very polite and very all that kind of stuff so um, um, I enjoyed this one a lot. I will probably be watching more of that because it, it's sweet. You know, it's not trying to um, do too much with that. But, um, you know, I liked it a lot. Uh, it's a guy, Cheap Magician, a little hard to judge. Uh, the main characters are a, a teenage boy and teenage girl who are transported to a, a fantasy world. Um, and the first episode is basically just them first orienting themselves to that, to that fantasy world. Solid animation budget, interesting characters, but I don't really get a feel for who they are and and where the story is going because so much is going on. One thing I do like is the fact that the boy and the girl are childhood friends. They both know each other and they don't have that you know butting heads thing of childhood friends. They like each other a lot. Um, I don't think there's any there's no romance implied in that first episode, but you know that could certainly. Um, you know, come out sooner or later. So I'm very curious to see kind of where they go with those relationships and the personalities as, as they explore throughout the show. Um, so yeah, I, I want to watch more of this to see how it, how it, what it does with its characters and whether that, that kind of comes together in an interesting way. Um, but a little hard to tell from that first episode. Then there's Kochoki over on Funimation. This is an anime series about Oda Nobunaga, the famous warlord who more or less brought Japan together in the 1600s and sort of conquered all of Japan. A famous uh, tactician and strategist. But this is about his early years. And the first episode is about him as a like 14-year-old um, running around and, and doing crazy things as a 14-year-old. And so this, clear, this appears to be sort of the, the early years of this very famous person. Um, again, a little hard to judge because it's rather shonen in style, not in the over-the-top fantasy style of like a, again like a Dragon Ball Z or a One Punch Man. Um, more in that sense of young teenage boys getting into scrapes and such things. Also, a really impressive um, speech given later on in this anime where I'm like, wow, that's well written. Like that, that's well thought out in terms of what, what's going on there. So again, cu I'm curious about this. I don't know that I'm going to follow it too much, um, but interesting. Interesting seeing a historical anime series. And it seems to be pretty, pretty historical. So if you're interested in kind of, sort of early Oda Nobunaga, you will, uh, uh, you'll definitely find something interesting here. And I'm, and I'm not sure how historically accurate it is, but 
cool to see history anime definitely magical senpai i was like okay another isekai series you know, you know maybe magical girl series no this is about stage magic um the main character is a boy who decides who gets kind of drawn in to a a club at school where the main girl um loves stage magic loves doing magic and is really really bad at it so it's that sort of humor there there is some uh, etchiness to the show although thus far that's been very light and innocent and goofy i think it's also a 12 12 minute episode series so not clear where it's going to go with that tone and that humor very much feels like it's based on a four coma manga so sort of you know set up punchline or you know set up uh, set up delivery punchline kind of a a thing uh, in in these very short segments but i laughed i thought it was fun it's cute decent animation budget you know certainly something that i could see throwing on and and just enjoying for a laugh then there's oh maidens in your savage season on high dive this is probably my big surprise of the season in terms of being very you know, well it it's basically about teenage girls in a literature club who are reading classics of Japanese literature, many of which have rather explicit sex scenes in them. So they're all like reading aloud in a club room these these uh, these scenes where it's very clear what's going on. And sometimes like it's it's couched in flowery language, but it's very clear what the symbols are. And so they just find this very embarrassing and then start you know talking to each other, you know, and, and first they don't want to, and then it's like, well, this is a thing. And they're all teenagers who are starting to actually like explore that aspect of, of, of teenage life. So you hear that and you're like, okay, you know, goofy sort of romantic sex comedy kind of a thing. No. It is this, at least first episode, surprisingly touching, very awkward kind of exploration of that, you know, adolescent you know sexuality kind of a thing where they're all kind of curious about it and you know how you you know how it is when you're you're that age and you know there are times when it's the only thing you can think about um and so it's, it's very much about that thing but also like they're not diving into bed with everyone all the time right that's not how the real world works most of the time so it's this interesting very realistic portrayal of adolescents dealing with those hormones and how real life doesn't let you just uh explore those as cleanly and as easily as sometimes we want so really interesting show definitely more shoujo definitely more um grounded and thoughtful there's some there's some like big comedic moments in the episode uh some slightly over the top stuff as you can see from that the girl on the top um but yeah really surprising really neat nice to see a show that is a little more subtle and um a, a little more careful in how it does things some of the times and sometimes it's just ridiculous comedy moving over to the ones within i'll be honest um this is one of the the shows that uh kind of like i i watched but it really i it doesn't stick in my mind very much uh, a group of of mmo players all get sucked into an mmo um where they're all kind of trapped there and have to do various challenges before they can get out uh it is very much that so king's game that kind of a concept um you know do these things and then you can you can get out of it um and bad things will happen if you don't um i gotta admit i do not find these things particularly um appealing for me because they're just so difficult to imagine them actually happening also doesn't help that they have a very there's a very weird character sort of making it all happen it feels like they're ripping off Danganronpa, frankly. It feels like it's basically Danganronpa um, light, in a way. Uh, so it just didn't really appeal to me very very much. It does have an interesting cast of characters, in the sense that they're diverse, they are they have different, different perspectives on things, which I like that. Yeah, it's a death game anime. Um, although it's not like, you know, one of you gets eliminated every episode or anything like that. But, yeah, I'm... I don't know. It just it it didn't work for me, 
but I think that's just because it's not my genre. So again, if you're interested in a sort of death game anime, uh, again, definitely more shonen and more, more like that. I don't know. Um, who knows? I try not to make everything about me on these. So it's like, yeah, yeah whatever. And there's Restage Dream Days. Three guesses what this show is about. Yep, it's an idol dancing and singing anime. But in this case, it's primarily about dancing. At least the first episode, where the main character is um, sort of, uh, well, various people try to rope her into a dance club, which she is oddly resistant and hesitant uh, to join. And so it's an exploration of why that might be and what's going on. Very cute. Again, if you like the Moe, you know, um, uh, Dancing Girls show, it is definitely that in concept. But that first episode put the brakes on it, which is a, a really interesting way of approaching that kind of a concept. It's like, yes, this is a thing, but also not everyone's into it. And they may have, like, very specific reasons why they're not into it. So... Who knows? Um, but if that's your thing, it's going to be your thing. To the Abandoned Sacred Beasts is set during the American Civil War. Not really, but basically. Um, it's, you know, guys in Civil War uniforms with m rifles and cannons and all the stuff you would, and, you know, tents and all the stuff you'd expect from like a Civil War battle. And then the monster people show up. Um, it's a very eclectic collection of elements, which I really enjoyed, I gotta admit. Um, it reminds me a bit of the Saga of Tanya the Evil in the sense of being, you know, a bunch of different, um, story elements all working at once. Very dark. Um, I would say more shonen than anything else in the sense of big action sequences, sort of over-the-top action in a lot of ways, uh, and some some really tough stuff that happens in that first episode. I, I, I Like I said, I think this is, this is one of those shows that combines a lot of things, but is very intentional about what it's doing with those and trying to do something interesting with those elements. So I want to try and check out more of, the, of this show and, and see where it goes on that. Definitely the first time I, was, I think I've seen an American Civil War set anime, even if it's like a fantastical version of that. Then there's Wasteful Days of High School Girls over on High Dive, which is a slice-of-life comedy series about teenagers hanging out and, you know, that. Um, so it feels roughly in the tone of... I've been a couple of shows like this recently. There was one that was uh, had no dialogue, uh, which kind of had this, this premise... Kind of Nichijou-esque, although not as uh, screwball comedy, you know, like. Um, so maybe not very much like Nichijou, I don't know. A little Lucky Star, perhaps. I'm trying to think of other, like, recent anime series that that, that made me feel like this. Um, partly because they all kind of blend together. <laughs> I'm having a tough time remembering all of them. But, again, if, if you like schoolgirls hanging out and and chatting and uh and the wacky hijinks that kind of ensue from those sorts of things that is exactly what that is um i found it to be fun entertaining and just you know one of those things where eh, it's it's fine it is it is exactly what it uh what it says on the tin and sometimes that's exactly what you want is just something you know nice and light and fun so those are all the shows that i caught out th this season i know vinland saga people have been talking about i just have not gotten a chance to see that one yet um, but that is the list for this time. So thank you all for watching. And um, I hope you can find some fun stuff this season.